Hello, Jeff Zwerink here, and welcome again to Give and Take, where we look at the latest scientific evidence and how it supports the truth of Christianity. Today I'm joined with Hugh Ross, and we're going to explore what Hugh sees as the most potent evidence for the truth of the Christian faith. Hugh, good to have you here today. Thank you. So Hugh, I'll just ask you directly, what do you find personally as the most powerful evidence that the tr Christianity is true and scientifically sound? Well, my story is one of being persuaded by my astronomy that there is a God. Mm -hmm. But for me, the critical thing is, can I actually trust the message that I see in the Bible? In my exploration, is there a book that God has communicated to us? So for me, the most significant thing was opening up the Bible and seeing that there is this account of creation and it was all in the correct chronological order. Everything was correctly described. And that proved to me that the Bible had predictive power which motivated mm -hmm. me to continue reading the Bible and eventually realize this really is the Word of God and I need to submit my life to the author. That, that's interesting. So it's not a single piece of evidence or a single argument per se, but that what you're finding in creation matches what we see described in the words of Scripture. Yeah, because your question was what brought you to the Christian faith. It's one thing to be a theist. It's another mm -hmm. thing to be a Christian. And so that was the critical point in helping me become a Christian. So, so what are some things that you saw when you were looking at the Genesis creation account that stood out to you as, wow, this is unusual? Well, it was really unusual because I looked at the other holy books first. And reading uh, Genesis 1, the scientific method leapt off the page, and that really impressed me. Describe that a little bit, because most people aren't going to see that or they're going to wonder, what is that? How, how does that play out? Well, Genesis 1, what it talks about God creating the universe, and it goes to earth. But what you see in Genesis 1, 2, the Spirit of God is hovering over the surface of the waters of planet Earth. It's dark on the waters. Uh, water covers the whole Earth. The Earth is formless and void. It's empty of life and unfit for life. And those are the first two steps of the scientific method. Don't interpret until you establish the point of view, the surface of Earth's waters. Second, don't interpret until you establish the starting conditions. And it lays out four starting conditions. And as a young astronomy student, I knew the conditions are right. And from that point of view, going through the six creation days and realizing from that perspective, everything stated in the six days of creation is correct with respect to the record of nature and is in the correct chronological sequence. And I knew there was no way Moses could have done that unless he'd been inspired by the one who actually did the deed. You know, it's, it's interesting listening to your scripture because I see two steps of that. One is that the process by which it's describing matches how we scientifically investigate the universe, which is interesting. Um, and I assume that was something you found in scripture and not other religious texts. Correct, correct. But then also beyond <laughs> that, the, the, conclu or the statements of what happened aligned with what we found as we've investigated. So it's kind of a two-prong approach if I'm getting what you're saying, or, right. or two prongs <laughs> of evidence there, if you will. And realizing that from Moses' perspective, there's no way he could have known that this was the truth. And so this I saw as evidence, the Bible is actually predicting future scientific discoveries. And I said, I wonder if that's the case with the rest of the Bible. And over the next 18 months, I realized, yes, it is. So this has to be the Word of God. So, so that's uh, even further there, is that by looking at a little bit, it says, okay, the Bible's worth reading here. It actually encouraged you to investigate more of the Scripture as well. The first time I picked up uh, the Bible, looked at Genesis 1, I said, I'm going to give this book at least an hour a day until I find a provable error or contradiction. Never found one, but I found that, a whole lot more. I got to commend you because there's not too many people that would invest that much time doing that. So I, well, I think that's remarkable. So. I think it's worth it, right? I mean, if I this agree. really is the word of God, it's worth that kind of time and attention. And at 17 years of age, I had the time. That's very good. So, so let me let me uh, ask a question. How would you now use this bit of evidence, you know, that was powerful and compelling to you? How would you use that in a conversation to engage somebody with the gospel? Well, the, the gospel comes out of the pages of Scripture. Here's a way you can be confident that the pages of Scripture really are the inspired, authoritative, inerrant Word of God. Put it to the test and actually look at it and see if indeed it's got the predictive power I claim. So, so in some sense, you're drawing upon that person's integrity of saying, you know, hey, you say the Bible is either isn't worth listening to, let's go in and look at it and see what it has to say, kind of challenging them to do that? Exactly, yeah. 
So, so if it comes up in a conversation of, uh, you know, if you were to try and want to bring that up into a conversation, how could you bring that in there? What, what, what would be the entree you would do to do that? Well, I ask people questions. And, uh, you know, if they're not a theist, and uh, often I'll say, well, why not? And they say, well, the Bible's filled with scientific errors. Well, there's an entree right there. <laughs> good point, good point. Uh, you know, and just say, okay, can you show me one? Uh, or just tell them my story. You know, I thought that way too. Uh, when I first picked up the Bible, it says, this is going to be like any other book. But I was shocked with what I found. God wants us to test. And so here's something you can actually check out. So, so what are some of the things that people will object to seeing the, the chronology is matching up with the scientific record? Well, typically people are going on hearsay. Mm -hmm. They've heard other people say things about the Bible. And they'll say, well, have you actually looked at it? I mean, I'll give you an example. A lot of people say, everybody knows Genesis teaches the world is flat. Well, can you give me the chapter and verse? And you mm -hmm. actually challenge them. Why don't you look at it for yourself to see what it really says? So this really does just provide an opportunity to go start digging into the, into the scriptures, either have the person do it individually or you get to go do it with them and be part of developing that Well, I think the key is to make them curious. Mm -hmm. you know, give them enough about the Bible to say, you know, I got to see that this is really the case. So I'll make a few statements. They'll say, well, I'm not sure. It's, I said, well, check it out. You know, thanks, Hugh. I appreciate you sharing. And, well, as we see from Hugh's story here that investigating the claims of scripture what it says in Genesis, how the scientific method is illustrated, how it's carried out, and the actual chronology of what's there matching what we find in, in creation is actually a powerful evidence to draw people to consider the claims of Christianity. And by being aware of that, we can actually encourage people to look at what the Bible has to say, and that's a place where they're going to encounter the Lord Jesus Christ. So I would encourage you to equip yourself to use this powerful evidence. And so now let's go over and see what Monica has to say. 